Has your school gone one-to-one -one with Chromebooks? And your kids have found ways around the filter and there's no way you can be in every spot in every moment of every day of your classroom um, there's a product called NetOp vision for teachers uh, my district just got it and this is going to be a quick little tutorial on how to use it and, and how to filter your students and how to use it effectively so welcome back to another mr lee teaches uh today we're talking about NetOp vision um it's a it's a app for teachers and extension for students uh, and so you would find it just by going to your web store and and you can download not that store and you can download it just like uh, any other extension or, or application uh, your students have to have it uh, the extension and you as the teacher have to have the application NetOp vision I didn't spell vision right, but so see, we have a student extension version and we have a teacher version. So the teachers need the teacher version, the student needs the student version. Uh, my district has pushed those out to the respective uh, populations, and so I don't have to worry about it as a teacher in, in Anderson 5. There is a free uh, trial you can use with this, so if you want to use it with your students, that's great. Uh, you can try it. And then it also works through Google Classroom. So you have to have your students in Google Classroom and that will become apparent in just a second. So I've already installed the, the application. I've got some Google Classrooms and some students that are enrolled in those. Um, right now it is September 11th, 2017 and Hurricane Irma is right through my window back here. Um, maybe I'll roll some some footage. It's, it's a lot of wind right now where I'm at, uh, just wind and rain, uh, and that's really all they're forecasting for us in South Carolina, um, not on the coast. So um, I thought I'd take this opportunity to go ahead and make this video. Anyway, uh, here's my application, and I'm going to go into that and pull it up. And it's going to ask me to sign in because, like I said, it has to go through Google Classroom. That's how it gets your roster, how it knows which students. So I'm going to pick my account and allow it. And I'm going to choose Go to Classrooms. Now it tells me that the last sync was at 216, which is right now. So I know that it's up to date with all the students in these various classes. So I'm going to pull up. Uh, I'm just going to pull up a cosmetology class because I'm a co-teacher in there. And let's kind of look through what's going on. So all of these students are offline because school has been canceled for today because of the hurricane. And But we can still go through and, and look at how to use this. You have to start your class. So nothing's going to happen until you pick the class, the Google Classroom that you're, you're looking at, and then you hit the little start button. So if we hit the start button, uh, nothing's going to happen for us right now because, again, nobody's online. But if people were online, uh, these screens would pop up as it found the, the student and ask them to share their screen with their teacher. Now, the cool thing is they get a choice. So they can say yes or no. Uh, students will typically start off by saying no. They don't want to share their screen. Well, 15 seconds later, it pops up. Do you want to sh please share your screen with your teacher? Yes or no. And they'll hit no, and then 15 seconds later, it'll pop up a big screen. And they really can't use their device until they accept, yes, I want to share my screen with my teacher. Um, so that's a real short learning curve for the students. They just go ahead and click yes now uh, after just a even a day or two of use, and they're just used to it. Uh, but then you have these buttons up here. So <clears throat> we'll just talk through them. I won't have, be able to show you everything, but it makes sense. Uh, the, the biggest thing I will be able to show you that you'll want to know. Um, demo just is you sharing your screen on their screen. So whatever's on your screen shows up on all the student screens. Um, send a message. You can select students either one at a time or multiple students. So if you see that some students are off track or you see some students are on a really good track, um, you can select those students and send them a message. You know, you're doing really well. Good job. Show it on the whole screen or just show it as a pop-up message. You get that option. Uh, so you have 200 characters, so it's a little bit longer than a tweet. You can get some good information in there. On the same token, you can push out a link. So if you want certain groups going to a certain web page and certain other groups going to a different web page, so if you want to differentiate your learning, 
you can share out different links or you can unselect all students. So now we've unselected all our students. We can share out a link to the whole class. So if no students are selected, you're dealing with the whole class. If students are selected, you're dealing with that subset of students. So I can, I can go to, you know, send, send them a link to google.com and teach them how to uh, uh, search. Um, all the students just got a push notification saying, please click here to go to the web page your teacher wanted you to. Uh, the next little icon is draw attention. When you click draw attention, it takes up the whole screen and it's like a curtains, uh, like at a movie theater um, or, or, or um, a theater, not a movie theater, but a theater, a play. They close the curtains on the screen and it says, please pay attention. Your teacher's about to say something amazing. And it literally has little uh, phrases like that. Um, that you'll, you'll be, the students will be seeing. And then when you unclick it, it drops the, the curtain away and they can go back to searching. The next one is filter the web. This is the one that teachers want to know the most about. So when you click on filter the web, you are now filtering the students where they can go, how they can access it. You can do it for the whole class like we have here. If I unclick it and then I just go in so let's say this student is, is getting off task repeatedly. I can just filter that one student. Um, I can go to a live view of that student. We don't have that option with the whole class. We get to see thumbnails of the whole class. But if I select a student and I go to a live view, it's gonna pull up that student screen big so I can see the details on the screen. And if I select this student, I can also use this button to actually just block them from going anywhere. So I can filter them, and we'll talk about how to set up filters in just a second, or I can just absolutely block them. And that just shuts them down. I can go address whatever I need to address with them, and then we can come back and get back on task. Uh, this button takes me back to all of my classrooms. So I don't have, there's no back arrow, anything like that. It takes me back, so it takes me out of that class completely and puts me back at my home screen. So we'll go back in. Um, different class, but uh, the same point. Now, when you're done with your class, when your class is over, you need to remember to hit the stop button. If you don't hit the stop button, you will stop other teachers from being able to start their class because these students will be stuck in your class still. So it's very, very important to hit that stop button. Now, the last thing I want to show you is if you click on your three dot menu over here on the, on the far right, we can configure our web filter. Now it comes defaulted with Google productivity apps. So that means that you can filter your students to only be able to use Google apps. That's not Google search. That's Google Apps. So Docs, Sheets, Classroom, Forms, uh, Sites, uh, Draw, uh, Google Draw, all of those things you, the students can use. They can't go anywhere else, though. So they can create things, they can work on projects, but they can't go out on the web. If you want to create your own, you can upload your own list in this same web configuration. So we would click the plus and we come over here to add new. When we add new, it's gonna ask us for what file do we wanna add? Well, we don't have a file yet. So I'm gonna cancel this and we're gonna walk through real quick how to, how to do that. If you go to your start menu, if you're in Windows 7, if you go to start, all programs, applications, or accessories, I'm sorry, start, all programs, accessories, and notepad. If you're on Windows 10 like me, just do a quick search for Notepad. If you're on Windows 8, I can't remember how to get there, so find Notepad. And we'll open up a blank Notepad. And we'll just add the web pages that we want the students to have access to. So www.google.com. Um, let's give them access to uh, www.cnn com so they can see the news let's see let's give them 
www.weather.com so they can see the weather channel. Um, and that's good enough for now. <clears throat> so now we're going to go to file. And honestly, the, the best way to do this is to pull up the web pages and copy and paste the links into this document so you don't misspell anything. Or um, if it's an HTTP web address or an HTTPS web address, you don't have to worry about that. You just copy everything um, from your, your, your bar and then copy. Control V paste, and then you know that they can go to that. Now, if you wanted them to go to Blogspot, you could erase all of this, and now they can go to anywhere on Blogspot. Um, that kind of thing. But anyway, we're going to save this. We're going to save as, and we're just going to call it links. Uh, my documents is fine. Save. Now I can close this and go back into my app and I'm going to click the plus and then add new, click the plus again, the small plus, and then go to my documents and then there's my file. I'm going to open it and now it's here and it's here for all of my classes. So all I got to do is make it for one time and now all of my classes, I have access to use this as a filter. Now, if I click on this, it shows me all of the web pages the students are allowed to go to. So if I click on this, now I've clicked on Google Productivity Apps and my links, and I apply. When I use this web filter, I am now locking those students to only those websites that I approve. They can't go anywhere else. And what that looks like, let me undo this and stop the class is it looks like this, where it says splash splash, looks like this web page is on vacation. And then at the bottom, so this is what they get when they try to go somewhere they're not allowed to go. And at the bottom, they get a list of all the places they are allowed to go. So this will tell them how they're being filtered. And so it's real intuitive for the students to realize what's going on and where they can and can't go very easily if you're filtering them. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, filtering is a good thing when you're doing testing, when you're quizzing them, when certain students have proven that they're not trustworthy uh, having free access to the internet. However, locking your students down to just these many websites means that you have to do all of the research ahead of time as the teacher and find the best websites. Typically your students will find better websites just because they search differently than you do. Um, come up with different ways of thinking about a question or a topic than you have thought about in the past. Um, so I don't recommend filtering them just carte blanche. You know, have a reason to filter them um, before you start taking away the access to the internet because after all, the internet's a pretty great thing. Um, anyway, that's my short and sweet on NetOp Vision. I, I hope that it helped explain things to you. Um, remember to stop your class at the end so you don't mess up other teachers. Uh, you have to make sure that all the students are enrolled in your Google Classrooms. And um, really, it's a very intuitive kind of thing. You mouse over the button and it tells you what it does. Uh, so if you have any questions, you just, you know, kind of play around with it. Um, but that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, like this video. And uh, if you do, please subscribe to the channel and get more updates in the future.